Well, good morning, Westmount congregation and friends of Westmount who have come together for this time of worship. I know this is a very unusual sort of format, but we've been doing it now for approximately five months. And uh, it's, from what I understand, doing very well. But I'm sure that as we gather together in this particular fashion, God, through his spirit, is still going to be with us, as he always is. First of all, I'm, I'm supposed to introduce myself. My name's Larry Jones. I'm a retired Salvation Army officer and a great friend of Westmount Congregation. For the last number of years, my wife and I have always been part of Westmount in various ways, in various activities, in various programs, and the worship times. So I'm very thankful for this opportunity to come and share with you on this particular Sunday. I want to thank Reverend Tony and the Worship Committee for their offer to come and share with you today, and I trust and believe that as we do so, God, through his spirit, is going to be with us and he's going to encourage us and help us through this very difficult time. This time when we're going through this virus situation, this pandemic that has caused us to worship in this way, separate from the ways in which we normally like to worship. Times when we can get together after Sunday for coffee and tea and biscuits. But we pray that in the future, very soon, that will happen again. We need more and more to put our faith and trust in God through these difficult times. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about trust and I want to talk about faith. And I want to help us to realize that with God on our side, we are going to succeed. We are going to be successful with this particular virus. I want to share with you this morning with a Psalm, Psalm 31. I'll beginning to read at verse 14. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord, I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Save me in your loving kindness. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I call upon you in moments of need. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak arrogantly against the righteous. With pride and contempt, how great is your goodness. A beautiful psalm of trust, a beautiful psalm of faith, something that we need to do, something we need to have foremost in our hearts and in our minds. Before we go any further, I want us to have a quiet time. I want us to have a time of silent prayer, a time where we alone can be with God and we can ask him to be with us, that his Holy Spirit will comfort us, will guide us and lead us as we put our trust in God on this day. So as we bow in prayer, we're praying for our church, we're praying for our church leaders, we're praying for our friends, we're praying for protection from this particular virus. So as we calm ourselves and be still before the Lord, I know that he is going to be with us. Oh, Father God, we come to you this day because we are at war in fighting this virus. Lord, it has caused a great deal of turmoil and uncertainty within our lives. Lord, allow us to just come before you with our thoughts and our prayers. Lord, we need to remember that you are in control. You are aware of all the events of this day. God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So help us to remember that we are loved by you. And by the power of your Holy Spirit living in us, we shall be victorious. We are your children, you are our Father. God, we come to you as a great provider, one who is always before us, one that says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. And yet in the midst of these days, we pray for your spirit to give us protection. We pray for our government leaders that they will do the right thing. We pray that in the midst of this pandemic, we pray for the, the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the staff. Lord, we come to you with all the comfort that these ones need. We pray for our church leaders. Pray for they be a source of love and compassion for all of us. 
and assist them with the words to say, and may you give them the message of hope for their congregation. So Lord, we come before you. We ask that you be with us. May your Holy Spirit be with us this day. May your Holy Spirit guide us and encourage us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now before I get into my message this morning, I want us to be comfortable. I want us to be relaxed. I want us to be assured that God is with us. Have your Bibles ready. Have your cup of coffee at your side. Be in your most comfortable chair. Be with pencil and paper ready to make notes if you wish to do so. But don't get too comfortable. I'll tell you a story. Years ago when Marlene and I were in charge of the Salvation Army Church in Kamloops, there used to be a gentleman that came every Sunday without fail. And he would sit right at the very back corner. And when I got up to start my message, he would sit back and he would fold his arms and he would stick his feet out in the middle of the aisle, cross his legs and close his eyes. So after a while, I got to know him and I said, uh, Vic, you seem very comfortable when I start my sermon. And he said, yeah, he said, uh, I can think better and concentrate better with my eyes closed. So as I said that, there were a number of people that kind of grinned and winked at me as if to say, yeah, we know the truth, Vic, we know the truth. So get yourself comfortable. I wanna ask you a question right at the very start. Have you ever got lost? You're going on a journey, you've got your GPS all set in place, you've got your map, you've got it all, the trip all in your head, you know exactly where you're going. So you have to trust your GPS, don't you? Well, you get into town and uh, first thing you do is you come to the first T-junction in this town, you've never been there before. You come to this T-junction and you say, do I turn right or left? And of course your GPS tells you to turn right. But naturally, you turn left because you think you know better. You're not lost until you make a few other turns and you realize you're totally lost. You have no idea where you are. You have no idea where you're going. You're gonna to have to get yourself out of this mess yourself until that little voice beside you says, don't you think we should stop and ask directions? Well, you know, we don't ask directions. Us guys, we always sort things out ourselves, don't we? We can always get ourselves out of that little mess. Not usually. It seems that we're supposed to trust in God in all situations of life. When we come to those difficult turns, when we come to those difficult problems, we have to know that God is the one who's going to look after us. Well, I want to share with you my scripture reading this morning. It's taken from the uh, book of Exodus, chapter 14. Now, the Lord has spoken to Moses. He has told the people that it's time for them to get out of this captivity. Beginning at verse 8, Exodus chapter 14, I'll begin at verse 8. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he chased after the sons of Israel, the sons of Israel who were going out boldly. Then the Egyptians chased after them with all their horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, his army, and they overtook them camping at the side of the sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked up and behold, the Egyptians were marking, marching after them and they became very frightened. And so the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, it is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in this wilderness. Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been far better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not fear, stand by and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you this day. For the Egyptians who you see today will be never seen again forever. The Lord will fight for you and while you keep silent. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we do thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us and directs us. We thank you that we can come together in this way and we can search the scriptures and realize 
Lord, you do have a plan for us. All we have to do is pause and reflect upon what you can do for us in our lives and keep our faith and our trust that you are going to watch over us. So bless us as we share this word together, we ask. Amen. Now let me set the scene for you. For 400 years, the people have been in captivity. For 400 years, they've been waiting for some leader to come along and take them to the promised land, to the land of Canaan. So finally, God's man, God's leader, Moses, comes to the people and he says, I am going to lead you out. We're going to go to that promised land that we've been looking for for so long. So they get themselves ready. And under the cover of darkness, they take off. And naturally, they assume, because this is God's man, Moses is God's leader, He's going to be the one that's going to take us out in a nice, safe, comfortable journey. They were led by the pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And everything is wonderful. Everything is great until they come to the shores of the Red Sea. And now they hit their first crisis situation. The Red Sea is too deep for them to wade through, too big for them to go around, too large for them to bridge over they're not going to make it. So they're into their first crisis situation, which leads to the second one. Pharaoh's army is charging after them. He's right behind them. He's ready to, as it says in the scripture reading, take them, kill them right there on the edge of the sea because they left without permission. Second crisis. The third crisis is now they've become complainers. They've lost their trust in God. They've lost their faith in God. And now there they are complaining to Moses, why didn't you just leave us where we were? Yes, we were servants to the Egyptians. Yes, we were in captivity. Yes, we were their slaves. But we weren't going to die as we are now here at the edge of the sea. So they had the third crisis situation. So what does Moses do? Moses reminds them that God had a plan. And his plan was to take them to the promised land. And God was not going to leave them alone. He was going to help them. God was going to be their guide and their, and, and, and their savior. So he says to Moses, I have a plan. He says, what you have to do, he says, Moses, I want you to raise your hands. And when I tell you, put your hands down. And Moses did. And the seas, they opened up. And, and there, God, uh, Moses said to the people, now you can go across on the dry land. You'll be safe. And they do so. Crisis number one has been averted. But now about crisis number two, because there comes Pharaoh's army charging right behind them. So God says to Moses, close your hands, which he does, and the waters come over. And it says in the scriptures, those uh, Pharaoh's men, which you, uh, you will never see them again forever. Crisis number two has been averted. And because of that now, crisis three is over with. Everybody's happy, everybody's good, everything's okay now. They've got across through the Red Sea and everything is wonderful. And God and Moses said to the people, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. And that's the message he gives to us in these moments of difficulty as these people found themselves in. God is on your side. God is going to look after you. All you have to do is keep your faith and trust in him. You know, we can look through the scriptures and we can find other people who came to similar situations in their lives. Think of Job. Job in chapter one lost everything. He lost his wealth, he lost his cattle, he lost everything, his children. Yet did he turn away from God? No, because when the people came to him and said, uh, Job, Curse God, turn your back on God. Look what he's done to you. But Job says, no, I shall keep my faith in God because God is my savior. And of course, David, there's another one. Remember that David was a good man, but he took another, woman, another man's wife in adultery. And when she became pregnant, he decided, well, I have to get rid of this guy. So he sends him up to the front lines during battle so he, where he knows he's gonna be killed. But David, in all his remorse, in all his prayers of forgiveness, knows that God is really his, his man. And he says to God, you are my savior. You are my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? And of course, 
David turned his life around, and then we had that beautiful psalm of uh, uh, forgiveness in Psalms 51, and David became one of the greatest psalm writers, someone we read every day, at least I do, and someone we, someone we read every time when we gather together for a morning worship. You see, God had a plan. God had a plan for these people. He had a plan for the Israelites to lead them to the promised land. He had a plan for Job and what Job was to do. He had a plan for David and what David was supposed to do. And our lives are no different. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And I know there's times when I too, in moments of confusion and difficulty, perhaps not as severe as what these guys went through, that I cry out and I say, God, where are you? In the midst of all of this, where are you, God? And that's when we need to turn to the Bible for comfort. That's when we need to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, who has the answer for us. Let me read it. For I know the plans that I have you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, plans to give you a future and a hope. Then you will seek me and find me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me with all your heart and I will be found by you. Now, isn't that a verse of encouragement to know that in the midst of all these problems that we can turn to verses like that and realize that God is for us. God does have a plan for us. As I say, my life is no different than yours. My life is no different than your neighbor's. We all want Jesus to walk down the, that center aisle of this church and yeah, I want him to come to me and I want you to say, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about the next day. I have a plan for you. We want him to come and right up to us and say, in the midst of all this noise and confusion, just listen to my voice as I speak to you. I have an illustration I can give you at this point that comes to mind. That about two weeks ago, I was looking for some special Bibles, life recovery Bibles that in this work that I am presently doing. So someone said, well, you go to Amazon, I'm sure you'll find them. So I do, and sure enough, there's all kinds of these Bibles, a good price, but most of them are delivered from the US. So if, am I ever gonna get them? When am I ever gonna get them? I said, this is not going to work, I need them now. So I, uh, Got a hold of a friend of mine, and he says, well, I know somebody down in uh, Newmarket that's doing a job similar to yours. Why don't you phone him? Here's his name and phone number. So I do that. So I phone this guy, and I tell him my story, and I say, I need these Bibles, and I need them right away. And I said, uh, most of them are shipped out from the States. And he says, don't worry, I'll have them for you next week. Well, that's wonderful, I said. Well, that was a week, two weeks ago. He phoned me last Wednesday and says, I have your Bibles. Where can, I, where can we meet? And I says, well, I live in Aurelia. Where do you, you live down in Newmarket area? And he says, well, let's meet in Barry for, for uh, a, late, uh, a late breakfast, early lunch before you go to work in the afternoon. This was this past Thursday. I said, great. Now I come to the point of this whole story. We get to this restaurant and it's an outside restaurant. There's people eating here and there, laughing and talking. It's a beautiful sunny day, music playing. And in the midst of all of that confusion, in the midst of all that noise, I didn't catch half of what he said when he was telling me about the work he was doing. And that's the way life is when we get in the midst of confusions and difficulties. God is speaking to us. God wants to give us a message of how he can help us through these situations, but the confusion of the world, sometimes we miss the message that God has for us. We're no different in, than Job, if you recall in chapter seven, when Job said, you know, my life is now meaningless. But then that was just a, a brief sort of slip that Job, Job had, but he knew that God was there for him. And he said, my life is now meaningless, leave me alone. Because in the midst of the confusion of his life, right at the very beginning, he was wondering what was happening. It's the same with these Israelites. When they got to the Red Sea and the, uh, the army was coming, the army was gonna destroy, destroy them all. In the midst of all that confusion, they started murmuring and complaining to God. So Moses says, don't worry, God is here for you. God is going to take care of you. You know, when we get into any event in life, 
We have to realize there are two players in this whole thing. There's a devil on one side telling you what to do, and there's God on the other side. And when you get in the midst of situations, you're, you're wondering, you know, just what is happening? What's going to take place here? But the devil's always throwing things in front of you and telling you, do this, do that. But God says, no, keep your faith and trust in me. I'm going to look after you. Don't forget, there's going to be, my, my angels are going to guard you and protect you. Speaking of that, there's an inter interesting story in uh, 2 Kings chapter 6. This is a story, and I won't uh, turn to it and read it for the Savior of time, but I'll give you the Reader's Digest condensed version of this particular story. Elisha is under siege by the enemy. They're coming to defeat him and destroy him. And Elisha's servant goes to the window and he looks out and all over the hills he sees this army of men ready to attack with their chariots and their horses. And he turns around and he goes to Elisha and he says, man, we are in trouble. There's this great army out there ready to attack us, ready to defeat us. So Elisha goes over and he spreads open the curtain and what does Elisha see? According to the scriptures, according to the story, he sees God's angels surrounding this army, preventing them from attacking, and thus Elisha was saved, and all his people were. We have to remember in the moments of difficulty, the devil is going to put thoughts in our minds which we don't want to hear, but God is going to say to you, don't worry, I am with you. I am going to protect you. I am going to watch over you. At first, the Israelites didn't see this. Job at times didn't see this but they, they remained faithful. And what an encouragement there is to all of us that when we go through these situations, we must not give up. We must realize that we cannot do it ourselves. We need God. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need his guardian angels to watch over us. Another illustration comes to mind. As I talk about, as I mentioned, in this place where I'm working now, I'm dealing with a group of men, and they're there for a period of time, and I'm counseling with them. And just recently, one of the guys came to me and he said, I think I'm going to leave the program. I says, Leave the program? Why? He says, Well, I got a handle on it. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. And of course, my counsel to him is, No, you're not okay. You, you, you have to wait through the problem through the entire program you have to work the program you're here for yourself let the program work for you no he says i think i want to go that's when we have to turn to uh, proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding this is what he was doing he thought i'm okay now i can look after myself but God says when we get in the moments of difficulty, when things aren't going so good, we have to trust in the Lord, lean not on our own understanding, and all our ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Did you catch that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. And there are these times when the devil will come and he will try and tempt us. He will try and take away the, the glories we have in the Lord, and he will put these thoughts in our minds. By way of personal in, uh, information or illustration, once again, let me say that this happens to me often. I will admit that. I wake up in the middle of the night, and the devil's tempting me with one thing or another. And I think about a situation that I get myself into, and he's saying, oh, this is what you do, this is what you do. How I get rid of it is I sing. Now, if I had a piano and everything set up here, I would sing a couple of choruses for you, but I know a couple of my friends from Westmont right now are saying, Larry, please, no. It's not one of your gifts. Don't be singing to us. So let me read to you a couple of lines of one of the songs that I sing quite often in the middle of the night. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proven him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for the grace to trust him more. And I sing that to myself in the middle of the night. There's nobody else around, so nobody's going to get offended. There's some other choruses I sing, I sing as well, but that's my favorite. 
Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Precious Jesus, oh, for the grace to trust him more. And when I do that in the moments of difficulty, when the devil's tempting me and he's putting thoughts in my mind, I sing that and before I know it, I've gone back to sleep and morning has come. I mean, did these people really think that God was gonna leave them after making promises to them? Did he really think that he was going to desert them there on the shores of that Red Sea when he said, no, I am here for you. I've sent you this leader. There's a verse from Lamentations. It's a very beautiful verse that would fit in here at this particular time. Lamentations, yes, it's in the Bible. It's right behind the book of Jeremiah. In fact, people will tell you that it was actually Jeremiah who wrote this particular book. But this is what the book of Lamentations says, chapter 3, verse 31. For we are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he allows grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affection, affliction or grief to the children of God. Isn't that comforting to know? that in the midst of our difficulties, God has not brought them on us. We've done, not, we've done nothing wrong, but sometimes we are tempted because of the situation we find ourselves in. You know, in these three stories of deliverance, if I can call them that, the Israelites getting out of captivity and going to the promised land, Job and all his problems, David and his situation. You know, in all these deliverance stories, we see that God was there for those people helping them. God was their comfort. God was their stay. He was with them. If you turn to the New Testament and look at all the deliverance stories that happened there as well, when Jesus was walking upon the earth, and he healed the sick, raised the dead, got the blind to see, healed the lepers, and all these deliverance stories, he said the same thing, your faith has made you well, go in peace. And God says the same to us. He delivers us from situations that are harmful to us, that we, we find ourselves in problems with, and we find the devil tempting us, but he says, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, For the Apostle Paul said, Come out from among them and separate yourself, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. In other words, I will deliver you from your situation. If you trust in the Lord, separate yourself and not, uh, and not touch the unclean things. When I think about it, isn't that what... Uh, Moses said when he came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, God said to Moses, tell the people to separate themselves from the unclean things. Just obey these Ten Commandments, of course, which they didn't. And if they had of, we wouldn't be here today worshiping Jesus because there was no need for him to come. We would, everything would have been good. But we didn't listen. We didn't come out from the things that we were doing. So therefore, we have Christ, who comes to be our Savior, who comes to worship with us and save us from all the difficulties. I have a verse from Isaiah 41, verse 9. If you want peace and order in your life, you must hear and answer the call of God and come out from the way you are living. Very clear. Just come from the way you're living, trust in God that he is going to help you through these difficult situations. Yes, I know there's gonna be times we waver this way, we waver a bit that way, it's normal, it happens. I was just thinking, many, many years ago, too many years ago that I care, I care to remember, when I was working in the hospital in Perry Sound, now we're going back, as I say, too many years, but a friend that I was working with was a real good golfer. And he said to me, he said, you want to take up golfing? I said, yeah, I'd like to. And he says, well, I'll, I'll teach you. So he gives me one of his old seven irons and we go up to, up to the baseball field, the baseball diamond there near the high school. And he starts to teach me how to grip, how to hold a club, how to stand. And of course, my first few swings, I was digging more dirt than actually hitting the ball. But anyway, time went on and I stayed with it. I was took and listened to what he had to say. I listened to his lessons and I started to get pretty good. Now, mind you, you're supposed to hit the ball straight, 
But I was maybe 15, 20 degrees this way or this way, but I kept practicing, I kept working at it. And finally the time came where I said, I'm ready to be a golfer. So we made a tee time and off we went. Stood up there in the first tee and he says, no, no, we don't tee off with that little seven iron, here's the big driver. Now when you hit the ball with a driver and you're 15 degrees off, you're in trouble. You're in bush. You're, you're in the woods looking for your ball. You're in the rough, as they say. And that's what happens to us in life. You know, situations come along and we may be a little bit offline here, there, this way. But it's when we lose our trust in God, when we lose our faith in God, that we go offline and we're in the rough to use a golfing term. We're in difficulties, but God, but Jeremiah said to us, if you remember, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, and we must trust in those plans. Now we have to remember that when Jeremiah wrote this in chapter 29, a couple of chapters previously, he was in deep trouble. The people didn't like what he was having to say. They were arresting him. They were charging him with treason and blasphemy and all those things uh, uh, against Jeremiah in chapter 26, I believe. And, and Jeremiah says, don't worry. The Lord is with me, and I put the situation in his hands. And then later on, he wrote this verse for us in chapter 29, verse 13. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, and we must trust in those plans. We must believe in them, knowing that God is going to help us. What we need to do sometimes is just relive the old situations, the old times, and see how we got through them, and help us to trust in God as we relive, re, relive those situations. Just as I come to the close of my message here to you, I want to leave with you a, a couple of scripture passages. The first one is Romans 8 and 26. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit gives us intercessions and intercedes for us through wordless groanings. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. That's why we must stay close to God, and close to His Holy Spirit, allowing Him to speak to us in moments of difficulty. And one more, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. For my grace is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in you. Isn't that wonderful verses to, to leave off with? Verses of encouragement, verses to help us in difficult times and difficult situations. I just want to have a brief pr prayer and just closing in this part. Holy Spirit of God, I want you to fill me and help me. I want you to help me with your spirit that I may make changes in my life and help me to be faithful and true to you in all situations. Lord, change me, mold me, melt me, fill me with your spirit. Amen and amen. Jesus, Jesus.
most precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. close off with a word of prayer for you before I say the benediction. Father God, I thank you for this congregation of believers. I thank you for the opportunity of coming and sharing and helping in this particular fashion to get the message of God's love and forgiveness to each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that as we too, like the people of old, get themselves into difficult situations, do not turn our backs, but Lord, trust in you. Trust that you are here to help us. I pray that in this particular congregation of Westmount that you will send them out to be a light into the darkness. Send them out to speak life to the strangers, mercy and love. Lord, open the doors of this church and fill it with the faithful. Fill it with the brokenness. Fill it with the lost. Fill it with those who are hurting. Lord, I pray for this neighborhood that this church is in part of. I pray that this church will be become their mission field. And I pray that for those who are hurting, those who are suffering, that they will be brought into this place and they will realize there is a place of love here. Lord, I pray for Tony and Tina as they're off for their time of rest and relaxation. I pray that you give them a good time and be with them. I pray for the leadership of this church I pray that you give them wisdom and understanding for the challenges that are ahead of them. And I pray in the midst of all this that we shall all be faithful to God. Let us close together by repeating the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you graciousness. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you all. May God be with you.